people of reddit when is one time you have felt genuine 100% fear the morning of my mom's wedding everyone relaxing eating breakfast clothes everywhere cousins running around all of the adults are on their porch chilling i hear my daughter screaming i run in the dining room there were clothes draped over the back of a dining room chair the clothes had a metal coat hanger on them she had gotten the hook of the metal hanger under her eyelid. I grabbed the back of her head and slowly pulled the hook out. Put a little ice on her eye for a bit. Luckily, it hadn't hit her eyeball at all. I was flying an airliner. We were maybe 1.000 above the ground while on approach to land at a smaller airport. There were thunderstorms in the area and we ended up in a microburst with zero visibility. We got a wind shear warning in the cockpit and started to go around. At full throttle and the nose up we were still sinking at around 400 ft slash minimum. Everything seemed to be running in slow motion both me and the other pilot were running through our required actions and call outs due to the training. In the back of my mind all I could think about was I cannot see the ground and we are falling. I know there is a hill out here somewhere. This is where I am going to die. The plane got down to around 400 feet off the ground before it finally started to climb. This was the most fear I had ever felt in my life. A few years back I was in a toxic relationship with an individual suffering from several mental illness. He refused to take medications. I had not a clue how bad it had gotten until he was driving us back to our apartment. He started rambling about how God chose him to save my soul and I was a fallen angel. He would send me back to heaven. He floored the gas on a short dead end road and almost drove into a cement wall. I remember briefly wondering if I should jump put the car at 50 miles per hour or stay in and pray the airbag saved me. He slammed the brake last minute as I was about to open the door and jump. Absolute fear. I ended up hospitalized a few days later due to other shitty relationship related events and never saw him again. Hands down. One of the more terrifying moments of my life. But not the only one I experienced by being with him. Once my mother called me on the phone telling me that a copy of our house keys was stolen that afternoon from the porter's lodge and someone might be in the house. This happened in the exact moment I was entering the house. Pretty scary but no one was there thank god. When I was still a beginning driver, I basically misjudged a turn at a highway exit when it was raining. My car swiveled and turned around. Somehow I managed to get it to stop. But I ended up bumping the side railing with the back of my car and the car turning more than 180 degrees on the road before coming to a halt. This is a very busy exit, and if someone had been right behind me, I'd have been dead. Somehow I managed to gather my wits, restart the car, turn it around, and drive off before another car hit me. I stopped at the earliest possible parking opportunity, and that was when I felt it the fear. I just started shaking uncontrollably. When I was trying to sleep at around 3 and felt someone press on my bed. Then bag on the chair started shaking. Then again I felt something on my bed. Finally I had the courage to switch on light and found a giant rat on my bed. It was 5 years ago almost to the day. I was home with my two daughters who at the time were 3 and just over 1. I was giving them a bath. Kneeling on the ground and all of a sudden it felt like something exploded in my heart. I remember thinking just get the kids out of the water. Nothing else matters. I got them out of the water and was able to call an ambulance. I was taken to the hospital and long story short I had blood clots in both lungs and my right knee. They think a piece of the knee blood clot broke free and passed through my heart. I'm very lucky to be alive and so grateful I was able to get my daughters out of the tub. I found out I have multiple blood clotting disorders and I'm on blood thinners for life but I'm alive. I was riding my bike home from work along a pretty busy main road. I live in the city. I got to a downhill and started to pick up pace when I noticed a brown snake, which are very deadly, lying across the bike just lane ahead of me. There was a car in the lane next to me and it was too late to stop, but I somehow managed to dodge the snake and kept riding. About 50 meters later, just as I thought I was safe, I heard a very loud hissing and felt something rush past my leg and thought the snake had somehow caught up and bitten me. It turns out my back tire burst, but in the moment I was absolutely terrified. Running out of gas in my boat with my girlfriend in open water during a storm. 
Ended up on a shoal trying to hold the boat, while a friend brought us more fuel. Honestly thought the waves would wash us away and drown. I used to measure roofs for a solar company. One time I went up on a very steep roof of a two-story house alone. And without a harness. This roof plane was too steep to walk, and the shingles were old and crumbing so I had to crawl, so I didn't slide down towards the edge. After about an hour of crawling around, the sun began to bake the shingles, so they were too hot to touch. So I decided to bug out, as the roof was too steep to walk. The only way to the ladder was by scooting on my butt with my feet pointed towards the edge. Every time I'd skid toward the edge my heart exploded in fear because it was hard to stop from moving. I had to use my hands to slow myself down and they were getting burned. All I could do was to rub my palms on my legs to transfer some of the heat. But they were being scorched. Imagine putting your hand on a hot frying pan full of grit. I was completely alone. In a faraway town. With no one to call. It took forever to get to the ladder, and by the time I did I was shaking and drenched in sweat. When I finally got back to the ground some people came out from a nearby house and said they saw me and were ready to call 9. Double 1. I had burn blisters on both palms and I never went on a roof like that again without a helper or PPE. When my mom and then 5 year old brother got in an ATV accident, they were driving slow through the woods and a large dead tree fell alongside the trail knocking down a smaller tree which hit them both in the head freak accident my other brother and i were outside filling the pool and we heard my mom yelling something i didn't know what it was but my stomach dropped we both ran to the head of the trail across the yard and she was carrying my little brother both covered in blood she ran half of that malalan trail carrying him they were both in the hospital for a week mom got some stitches in her face and my brother's skull was shattered, requiring surgery and a metal plate put in. He's graduating high school next year and doing well. Edit, damn. I didn't expect this to blow up. Thanks everyone for the good wishes and cake. The time I got into bed with my girlfriend and immediately started coughing up blood, ran into the bathroom, and held onto the sink for dear life. Every breath I tried to take I just ended up wheezing more blood out of my lungs. By the time the ambulance got there I had pretty much come to terms that this was how I died. Then it slowed down and finally stopped by the time I got to the ER. Long story short it turned out to be Hodgkin's lymphoma. Had chemo for 6 months and am cured now with minimal repercussions. Scariest time of my life. I was on a 360 degree roller coaster and you go around and around, but it got stuck at the very top and the right shut down for 5 minutes. So I was up sitter down, and I was very little, and it was terrifying. I was 6 years old, and went to take a leak. I was at my grandma's house in a small village in India. The bathroom was an outhouse. Just as I was about to start, I noticed a cobra hissing at me. I ran like hell. I've posted this before. But anyway. Buckle up it is a long one. We used to go sailing in the BVI's for summer holidays, when I was younger. One evening we were anchored in a bay with a party boat of teenage Americans nearby. After some alcohol starting a water fight seemed like a great idea. At some point during the ensuing chaos I ended up a Uraki na Pertahu and held as a hostage on their tender little motorboat for getting from sailboat to shore. They decided to drive me out to sea and once we were thoroughly out of the bay they started joking about tossing me overboard. Drunk me is not smart. Drunk me thought the best response to this joke threat was to stand up and yell hurry out can throw me overboard if I jump out of her which I promptly did. They laughed and drove off. I was left floating in the middle of the sea about half a mile from shore in the pitch black. At first the alcohol stopped me from panicking and I decided to just swim back. Half of my life's known at that bad right. Now my brain was beginning to wonder what was swimming around beneath me, but I was mostly calm until something bounced off my leg. This is the point at which I need to introduce you to the villain of this story. You see usually the BVI's has lovely safe clear waters. However once every 45 years they get unusually high numbers of moon jellyfish. Of course moons are not scary at all. They rarely sting, and when they do it are as not even as painful as a nettle sting. They really were in at the problem. 
it was the creature that used them as a food source that was the danger. Known colloquially as the stinging cauliflower. They were purple balls of pure evil. In our marine life books they were the only jellyfish that got the same danger slash pain rating as the Manawa jellyfish. Earlier that holiday a young girl from another boat got stung while playing on the beach. We heard her scream from about a quarter of a mile out the bay at anchor. She went into anaphylactic shock and almost died. Side story. The vine gar and talcum powder we had stocked for jellyfish stings apparently saved her life according to the emergency responders, because we zoomed it over when we heard the mayday on the radio. Anyway, back to my story. There I was half a mile out from sure in the pitch black with no idea if these kids were going to come back and get me, or if they would even be able to find me again in the dark, since I had no idea if I was drifting with any current. A moon jellyfish had just bounced off my leg, and where there are moons there were always cauliflowers. I was pretty certain, if I swam into one, and got stung chances are I would not be able to stay afloat, and I would drown. I start to feel genuinely sick and scared. Struggle to keep my breathing under control etc. But Pharaoh has nothing to do, except swim and hope to high heaven I don't know it hit one. So that is what I did. It was over 15 minutes before the shitheads came back to get me. By this point the panic and swimming had turned my muscles to jelly and they had to literally haul me back into the boat. I never told my family or friends on the holiday. Did not want to ruin their fun. I just quietly told folks I was tired and went to bed. To this day I can still taste the salt in my mouth and feel my heart rate and breathing increase when I tell that story. TL. Doctor I'm a stupid drunk and jumped in jellyfish infested water in the middle of the night and got left there and tried to swim back. Am lucky I am not dead.